Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Genius New York 2020 Pitch Finals. I'm Demetrius McNeil, and I work in business development here in Central New York, and we'll be your co-hosts for this exciting event. I'm Mia, and run startup events in Central New York, and we'll also be co-hosting this event. And I'm Kara, the last co-host who works directly with the Genius New York program. Today, we hear live pitches from the five finalists who have been in the Genius New York Accelerator for eight months now. We have five awards to give out to these cutting-edge startups four $500,000 awards, and one grand prize of $1 million. But the best part is, everyone wins in the end. So sit back and enjoy the show. This is Genius. Genius. Genius New, New York. York. Hi, I'm New York Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, and as Chair of New York's Regional Economic Development Councils, I'm proud to open up this year's Genius New York Finals, the world's biggest business accelerator competition focused on unmanned systems and big data startups. I'm proud to say that here in New York, we are a hotbed for innovation. We strive to be ahead of the curve and we set the benchmark for the rest of the country to follow. We want entrepreneurs to know that if you come here with your ideas, we're going to help you take it to the next level. And at the same time, create good paying jobs and help our central New York communities thrive. The Genius New York program is in its fourth year, and New York State has invested over $12 million in 22 companies that are paving the way for the future. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next five can bring to Central New York. Stay tuned for past finalist updates throughout the show. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Hochul and Empire State Development. This year, we're doing things a little differently due to COVID-19. We're excited to bring you the first virtual pitch competition. Five startups from around the world will pitch for five minutes, followed by a short Q&A with our judges. They're excited to pitch to you in just a few minutes and have been making huge strides even in the wake of COVID-19. Here's a quick update from the director of Genius New York, talking more on those achievements over the last eight months. Hi, I'm Jeff Fuchsberg, director of Genius New York, and what a journey it's been since we brought five companies from all around the world here to Syracuse back in January. But through everything 2020 has thrown our way, these companies have helped maintain the vision of Genius New York by working alongside us to refine their business plans, build their products, hire from our local talent pool, and provide valuable internship opportunities to our local students. I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to work alongside these fantastic teams and a few other people who deserve some recognition for making this all possible. A big thanks to the entire Genius New York team, Empire State Development and all of our sponsors, and all of you out there watching in Central New York who are joining us once again to see who will be the next $1 million Genius New York winner. Thanks, Jeff. The premiere is happening now, and we want you to tell us how everyone's doing, what pitch you like the most, and we'll be adding links throughout the event in the description. Be sure to also follow along on our social media channels like Twitter by using the hashtag GeniusFinals. We've enlisted five judges to vote on the winner and ask all the hard questions. Let's meet them now.
Now that you met our judges, it's time for the first pitch. Are you ready? Be sure to comment and engage with us on social because we want to hear from you. Now, without further ado, here is Botsnas from the UK. Good afternoon. I'm Andre, and I've been building robots for over 25 years. Yes, I was seven years old when I built my first unmanned prototype. Five years ago, together with my co-founders, Moana and Adrian, we decided to build Bots and Us. And we've done this to make autonomous robots a seamless part of society. Only recently, we've joined a very select club of companies, those that have fully autonomous robots deployed in dynamic public spaces. And this is with paying customers that use our technology to streamline and revolutionize their customer experience and their operations. On the left-hand side, you see MediaMark, and on the right-hand side, Dixons. These are two of Europe's biggest electronics retailers. But why do we do this? The answer is very simple. Product availability is a $1 trillion problem. This is how much it costs physical retailers not having the right product on the right shelf for the right customer. Over 24% of Amazon's revenues actually come from someone that first tried to buy a product in store, but either couldn't find it or they couldn't find someone to ask for information or ask for support. To address this issue and to solve the problem, we have launched a fleet of modular, fully autonomous robots that can bring the power of e-commerce and data to physical stores. Now, let me tell you how this works. Our service robots can autonomously and proactively engage with customers offer product information or guide them to specific product locations, allowing them to compare the products in real time and giving them the right promotions. In parallel, our operations module can scan the shelves, understand where each product is, understand if something is misplaced or misguided or mislocated. But the magic happens when you bring these two data sets together. This is how we allow our customers to have the right product for the right person at the right point in time. We therefore, have an impact across the entire retail cycle. From ranging to merchandising, driving sales, increasing customer satisfaction, and monitoring inventory and driving efficiencies. The ROI is felt across both the top line and the bottom line, not only driving additional revenues, but also pushing efficiencies, pushing cost savings. And this is something we validated with one of our flagship customers, Media Market. They believe that the generated insights will lead to a 5 to 10% increase in revenues per store, mainly through giving category management access to real-time information and real-time data in the store. But the, also the overall profitability will be going up as well by streamlining the experience the staff has with customers in store. We operate under a subscription model called Robot as a Service, which imply a monthly recurring cost for each robot deployed. In the US alone, we will start by targeting consumer electronics as well as DIY segments with a market of just over 5 billion. Our team brings together experience from top companies like Google, IBM, Jaguar, Land Rover and McLaren. We have all the skills required to scale up and to commercialize this full stack technology both across the European and the US market. But don't take my word for it, the proof is in the pudding. In record time, being extremely cash efficient, we've had an absolutely fantastic journey. We've built a fully autonomous robotic stack. We have robots deployed and we have scope for another 380 units with the current pipeline alone. We've already filed one patent, we're drafting two more, and we've done all this by raising just over 5 million from public and private funding. From the beginning though, we've kept a very modular approach in our technology, but also in our thinking. This helped us respond to customer demand really quickly, but it's also gonna help us quickly expand into new markets and new verticals if needed. This has been our way of future-proofing our company and future-proofing ourselves. In the meantime, we're extremely excited to be part of the Genius New York program. It really helped us shift gears and start planning the best ways to fulfill the fantastic demand we have from the US. We believe we will have an amazing impact from Central State New York, both on the ecosystem by sharing our knowledge, by building international bridges and by creating jobs, as well as deeply engaging with local providers. All of this contributing to build a thriving robotics hub. Thank you very much, and please join us on the robotics revolution. Hey, Brock, great overview. Um, really seems like a, a, a very interesting model. I love the, the robot as a service. You're talking about the, the support cost. 
um, using some outside groups that you're looking to contract with, that you had that built into the model. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong. Did you say you thought the life of the systems was approximately six to eight years is what you're modeling? Yeah, so the, the, current, um, so the current hardware, we estimate to, to be able to get that out of it. Do, do, um, just looking, you know, we do more, um, we're looking at drone as a service models with some partners of ours right now actively. So this is right, right in my purview right now. And some of the things we're looking at is uh, a lot of our customers are asking for potential hardware refresh, two, three years. Customers are expecting new technology in this space. Are, are you guys talking about that at all? Will people four or five years from now be going, wow, this, this robot looks looks obsolete or not like the cool new robots out there. Are you modeling in any potential hardware refresh within that six to eight years? I, I, I could take that one just uh, from a financial perspective, like on all our, our plans, we're actually looking at a three year um, model. But Andrea was talking about it could last up to six. But the way we've modeled our finances, we're looking at a, about a three year refresh. So absolutely, we're, we're keeping that in mind. We don't want people to think that it looks outdated and today's technology, we will probably want to put other stuff on it because like when we started five years ago, for example, like LiDAR sensors used to be hugely expensive yeah. um, and also like quite bulky and now they're becoming smaller in size and we're also adapting our tech quite quickly. So that, that's something that we've had in mind when we've done the modeling and the financials. As one of the most active technology and venture capital law firms in the Northeast, we are proud to again partner with Genius New York. Through our work with many of these teams, we are excited by the transformational technologies that they're developing, as well as the dozens of new jobs being created in Syracuse, New York. We will continue to support Genius New York and help put Syracuse on the map as a destination to start and grow technology companies. We have been involved with Genius New York since the beginning, way back when the UAS initiative in central New York came to be. And it's amazing how far it has come in that period of time but it wouldn't have succeeded without the community support that has really come together to make this a reality. Genius New York has done an exceptional job of even furthering that effort by in creating, encouraging young entrepreneurs to take a gamble. People can't take these gambles unless there's a mentoring support, community support, and financial support to make that happen. And if we can achieve this, we not only change our region, we change the world. We're so appreciative of all our local sponsors. Thank you. Now on to our next pitch, Geopipe from New York City. Hi, I'd like you to imagine what it would take to create a perfect digital twin of New York, San Francisco, or Syracuse that you could explore in your computer. I'm Dr. Christopher Mitchell, and I'm excited to introduce you to Geopipe using Geopipe Syracuse Twin. 15 years ago, I met my best friend and co-founder Thomas Dickerson through a shared passion for programming graphing calculators. Since then, we've built teams, solved challenging technical and non-technical problems, and earned a pair of computer science PhDs. And six years ago, while putting the real world into video games, we stumbled onto a huge problem. While the real world is analog, professionals in myriad industries spend $100 billion every year on geospatial data because they need the real world in digital space and they need to know what's in the world, not just how it looks. Two years later, we found a Geopipe to solve this problem. Geopipe makes it possible to put the real world into virtual space for simulation, visualization, and interaction. For example, we can help game developers build huge open world games set in the real world. We can help simulation creators train autonomous vehicles for millions of hours before endangering real lives and property. And we can help architects and real estate developers plan and visualize their projects in the world of tomorrow. Geopipe is working within what in 2020 is a $17 billion space of 3D mapping and 3D modeling, within which $8 billion will be spent this year alone on the types of digital twins that Geopipe provides. Geopipe is the game changer. We are the authoritative whole earth digital twin built by AI. While raw data is increasingly accessible, collected by drones, cars, and satellites, professionals don't need raw data. They need usable digital twins with every object labeled and reconstructed. Geopipe is the missing link between raw data and usable digital twins. Today, our customers can spend millions of dollars and months to years hand building even a small area of the world. With Geopipe, they can get a twin of any size at any level of detail in less than an hour. The coolest part is how it works under the hood. We start with those same types of raw data, for example, satellite photos, laser scans, and GIS data. 
We pass them through our proprietary machine learning pipeline, which processes this data to find every single building, tree, window, door, sidewalk, road, material, and more. We then go one step further, turning that rich 3D mapping information into immersive 3D models, like this one. We can create a city the size of New York in less than a day. Our first product was built on feedback from our early adopters. Geopipe Context Snap is an in-browser interface that lets them see our 3D cities directly in a web browser, click on buildings and other objects to see exactly what we know about them, and then select an area that they can download and license to use in their existing software and workflow. As we've expanded to customers in gaming and simulation, we've also released the Geopipe SDK and API. This allows customers to stream the Geopipe Earth directly into game engines, visualization software, virtual reality software, and simulation software. From our beginnings, as two computer scientists passionate about putting the real world into video games, we've expanded to a team of experts in computer science, machine learning, business, sales, and data. We round out our team with industry-leading advisors in academia and entrepreneurship. Over the last four years, we have bootstrapped Geopipe with over $1.6 million in grant and investment funding, including a $1 million National Science Foundation SBIR grant. We have de-risked the business through premier accelerator programs like Techstars New York City and now Genius New York. We've added 4,000 square kilometers of the world to Geopipe, and we have proven product market fit with dozens of paying and pilot customers. Genius New York has already accelerated Geopipe. We have added two developers in central New York that have helped build out our technology. We've been able to hire a VP of business development who has massively increased our 2020 revenue. We've started relationships with the city of Syracuse, with the Museum of Science and Technology in Syracuse, and with past and present Genius New York teams. After a successful season adding new customers and proving out new applications in virtual tourism necessitated by COVID-19, we're proud to publicly announce for the first time that we've just closed a major pilot program for an even larger project mapping an entire country for a major car company. And the Genius New York $1 million first prize will accelerate us even faster. We will be able to build out our team substantially by the middle of next year, including key hires in central New York. We will be able to add major features that customers have demanded to reach the next level of engagement. And those will fuel us to a significant growth in our monthly and annual revenue by Q2 of 2021. We are passionate about digitizing reality. And if you're as excited as we are, we would love to speak further. We are Geopipe. I guess you sort of touched on this, but it seems like at least, so within gaming, it sort of can scale up or down. Like there's not some big upfront cost, whether you're working with one of the largest gaming studios or not. Is, is that's, is that, did I hear that correctly? That that's correct. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the difference for us is whether we have our system run over a square block of area or a few hundred square miles. Um, as I mentioned during the presentation, we can reconstruct a huge area. The size of, you know, New York is about 500 square kilometer of square miles, excuse me. Uh, in less than 24 hours because it's a powerful distributed system. Um, we have a great um, cost versus uh, <laughs> profit um, system in that once we generate an area once, we can license that out to many different customers. And the more customers that license that same area, the more we can amortize those costs of data purchase and um, just server time over all of those customers and the better our margins are. Genius New York has been around since 2017 and has brought in millions of dollars in revenue and has helped hundreds of local businesses, plus created many jobs locally. There have been so many successes within the Genius New York program. Let's check out one of them right now, PhotoKite. PhotoKite became involved with Genius New York in 2018. We were fortunate enough to be the grand prize winners that year. PhotoKite is a tethered drone system that provides situational awareness to public safety officers across the world. We've successfully launched in the North American fire market in Europe, and we're going to be making additional announcements and launches in the public safety space later this year. Genius New York was instrumental in propelling this company to scale up this tremendous technology. The system is out there helping save lives daily, and we will continue to grow with Genius here in Central New York. PhotoKite is just one of many success stories. And to talk more about all the successes we've had here in Central New York, here is Mayor Ben Walsh and County Executive Ryan McMahon. The city of Syracuse and Central New York have seen significant growth in the tech sector over the past decade. 
especially around the industry sector of unmanned aerial systems. Genius New York has served to accelerate that progress. Not only are we seeing organic entrepreneurial growth from the city of Syracuse and from our region, through Genius New York, we're attracting businesses and companies and entrepreneurs from around the world that are coming here because of Genius New York and because we have that ecosystem and that infrastructure in place that's gonna really help us thrive in the new economy. In central New York and Onondaga County, one of our emerging economic clusters is our UAS industry. What we've seen with the Genius New York program, the UTM corridor, looking at Warren Street as an emerging tech cluster of young tech companies. We've made strategic investments in our tech garden, in the STEAM school, all these initiatives to make sure that these businesses have the tech talent they need to grow right here in central New York. Awesome things are happening in central New York. Our next pitch is our local team from here in central New York, Egit Liber. Genius New York selects one local finalist each year. Let's hear it, Egit. Hello, I'm Joseph Pamiano, co-founder of Egit Lieber, a company dedicated to solving environmental problems. I am here to talk to you today about blue-green algae. Did you know that 40% of our nation's drinking water tests positive for the dangerous toxins produced by blue-green algae? Our mission at Egit Lieber is to mitigate blue-green algae. We began this company out of a need to preserve our natural resources and to help provide both safe and reliable sources of drinking water. In just the past few weeks, there have been dozens of reports on blue-green algae across central New York. Our team is comprised of an engineer with 25 patents to his credit, a patent attorney, a PhD researcher from SUNY ESF, three interns from Syracuse University's Case Center, and an advisory panel. Blue-green algae is a growing problem. When left on its own, it can create a toxic bloom that can double in size every three days. The blooms are formed by a combination of warmer waters and nutrients provided by fertilizer from agricultural runoff. As these blooms grow, the likelihood that they will produce harmful toxins also grows. Egot lever will attack the algae from both the air and water. First, a drone with specialized cameras is used to identify algae blooms and then coordinate a robotic vehicle to safely destroy the algae. No other forms of mitigation can be as target specific to destroy blooms on contact. Egot Lever's form of mitigation is chemical free. As an R&D startup, we have worked closely with SUNY ESF research teams to test our technology on algae taken directly from Lake Neatuanta. The DEC utilizes this lake to test new mitigation technologies and our results have shown a 95% reduction in blue-green algae after just 10 days. Most exciting of all, we have found a 90% reduction in toxin levels, which remain low for several weeks following treatment. Our market is local, national, and global. Blue-green algae is estimated to cost Americans approximately $2.2 billion annually, and as high as $4.6 billion globally. Our plan is to scale our technology to reach all impacted waterways across the nation and eventually internationally. Our value proposition is simple. Quick identification and mitigation of blue-green algae to restore the water's quality. Our solution is chemical-free, scalable, and has been successful in dozens of laboratory tests at SUNY ESF. In addition, there are few competitors in our space. Other mitigation practices are manual and not target specific to blue-green algae. So how do we make money? Our target market is the over 10,000 lake association nationwide. The typical cost associated for a non-chemical treatment averages between $150,000 to $250,000. And that's just for the initial startup with an annual operational cost of approximately $100,000 per year. However, 
Based on the size and scope of our MVP, Egat Lever will focus on mitigation projects ranging from 1 to 20 acres. For example, to mitigate a 10-acre site, Egat Lever will charge $49,000. So as you heard from others, we, you only pay for what you need. We are asking for the million dollar grand prize to allow us to continue to improve on our groundbreaking technology and to expand our collaborations with top university and researchers here in central New York. With your additional investment, Egat Lieber is looking to grow our sales team and to execute the commercialization process of our pres water preserving technology here in upstate New York. Choose Egot Lever, and let's clean up the waterways together. Very cool having a company addressing an issue affecting Central New York. Um, so wish you a lot of luck um, with that. Um, you already mentioned that you know the uh, the sweet spot, if you will, for this area is ninety days. Are there lakes in the continental United States um, that have this issue in the December through April time frame? Um, there are, I don't have a, a complete list on them. For example, we have lakes down in Mississippi and Texas, which they've invited us to come down after our season here. So in Mississippi is where the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they obviously wanted to see it. And that's, that's an obvious one. But as far as Texas, they've asked us to come down there in Austin, Texas. Um, and their, their seasons extend October, November, um, and it might even go into December. It depends. Mother Nature changes from year to year. Um, but there are certainly states that extend the season beyond just New York. Fortunately for us, because of COVID, that kind of that slowed us down. Um, but getting into the water for next month, we'll have a solid month of, uh, of engagement at uh, Skinny Atlas Lake. Um, but as that season winds down, last year they, they, they saw their last toxic bloom um, the first week of October, uh, but it was, it was an unusual warm spell. Um, we will be able to continue our research, not just in the lab, but we'll be able to take our, our ROV and take it down south and continue the process of refinement with, with different forms of algae and not uh, um, down with some states that experience those blooms extending well beyond our, our three months. Congratulations to this year's Genius New York finalists. We applaud your courage as you start your own businesses and venture into entrepreneurship. At Talus, we value innovation, which is why we were attracted to Central New York to build a major part of our business to address digital aviation and the integration of UAS into the national airspace system. The Genius New York program has allowed us to get closer to those innovators and those entrepreneurs that form the future of the aviation system. Integration of UAS into the airspace is largely the biggest challenge that we will face as an industry. And the Genius New York program has cultivated many entrepreneurs and new businesses that have helped us address the challenge that we face in this aviation and growing sector of autonomous systems. The Genius New York program allows us to get closer to those innovators and solve problems to help grow the economy here in central New York and around the world. Again, congratulations and best of luck on your new business ventures. Thank you, Talis. Now, one of our other sponsors, Assured Information Security, wants to give you, the audience, a chance to win something. We'll randomly select five people who are engaging with us on social media, so be sure to use the hashtag GeniusFinals. So get commenting and engaging, and you'll have a shot at a DJI Tello quadcopter drone. Let's just get right into it. Here's our next pitch coming all the way from Australia, Sky Network. Hi, I'm Rory, and I'm a co-founder of Sky Network. During my 13 years in the Royal Australian Air Force, I went from flying this jet with my hands and feet to flying this drone with a computer in the busiest drone airport in the world, Kandahar, Afghanistan. 10 years on, and drones have been commercialized. But there's a problem. Last year, commercial drone registrations reached nearly 400,000. This compared to a manned aircraft fleet of a mere 7,600. With a staggering 55% growth forecast, things are just getting started. 
Legacy air traffic control's centralised architecture is human-centric and is not equipped to deal with this quantum shift in airspace demand. Meanwhile, the existing solutions for drones won't scale and security and safety have been compromised for e-commerce data privacy. Our software is the highway code of the skies, the rails and rules on which drones fly. We are building a traffic management solution for drones that ensures rapid, dynamic and safe airspace manipulation at scale. It permits manual or automatic flight authorizations based on quantifiable risk. It tracks who flies where and when and identifies flight status. And it's been built by our amazing software engineers from Syracuse University. Our system works because our state-of-the-art blockchain network maintains a secure common airspace picture, updated jointly by all parties in real time. Powerful and it's open source for unfettered global adoption. This standard permits consensus over airspace changes based on a single shared rule set, which reduces risk of airspace collision, whilst maintaining an ultra secure airspace data record. The system builds trust through transparency and security. Then our risk management R&D permits more flight authorizations in less time in increasingly complex airspace. Aviation is heavily regulated, but governments need standards to move forward. We've developed a framework agreement for technical cooperation to assist governments in adopting policy and standards the right way, not the e-commerce way. This permits regulatory sandboxes where we can accelerate our research and inform policy, driving new standards. We've exchanged our first agreement with the city of Orodea in the European Union, and we're in the final days of legal scrubbing with the government of Albania. We continue to develop solutions in Switzerland and Australia. We sell our proprietary software via a SaaS model, which includes a base fee for the platform, plus a scalable per drone fee for risk-based value drivers and APIs. And our team, has over 55 years of aviation operations and engineering expertise. We've steered and advised governments, crafted policy, negotiated treaties at the European Union level and around the world. We've built eight figure software startups from the ground up and we've built traffic management software for drones before. Whilst heavily contributing to the extant risk management framework in wide scale use today, JARUS SORA. This industry's hard to fathom growth prospects will drive new business models and innovative new use cases, just like the internet did. But it needs effective management and an open, fair protocol. Now is the time. Sky Network has the manpower, the expertise and the will. With $1 million, we will invest in the establishment of the Sky Network Foundation headquartered in Syracuse a not-for-profit charged with the uh, governance and maintenance of the open source airspace management protocol of the future, the Sky Network blockchain. A new Drone Economy Summit Syracuse, bringing the drone economy world to Syracuse in partnership with Salim Ismail, author of Exponential Organisations. Our continued research and development into hard problems, fair airspace negotiation and scalable dynamic rerouting and our already established engineering team in central New York. Thank you. Because I'm more pilot than the technical guy, I reached out to our two um, technical geniuses, um, other than Mark, um, at New Air, um, who, who really specialize in UTM and the technical aspects that we're trying to achieve at the test site. And there, I, I showed them your business case and you know, solicited their input. Um, they're both familiar with what you're trying to do. They're both huge fans of what you're trying to do. But as your uh, business case somewhat alludes, and, and I thought even more so your pitch just now, the five minute pitch, you had a couple slides in there that were very telling and very accurate. Um, this is, this is going to take some time like everything else with the FAA. And you, you're onto something right now that may be a little bit, or in the FAA's case, a lot ahead of what they are ready for. Um, 
but both of our experts think that th this is a very viable answer to the problem that you've you, that you highlighted. Um, just dealing with the FAA, and I've already made one comment about the FAA in one of the previous pitches. You know, it's the reason my hair is gray right now. Um, they're risk averse. They're very comfort level driven, and neither of those things do you provide them currently. But mm -hmm. that's not to say that this, you know, this is not the answer. Um, it's just, you know, as Dave mentioned, um, this, this may take a little while. That's pretty much, you know, what I have as comments. Thanks for that, Tony. Um, I think uh, we've we've identified the same problem. Um, if it is a problem that we can identify and that the FAA is likely to be, um, we'll call it a, a midterm adopter perhaps. <laughs> um, so we, we identified our beachhead markets to be sort of the, um, you know, the European Union, Middle East, and um, potentially even uh, the Asian region, because these are jurisdictions that might be willing to take a little bit more risk to get ahead. Um, so that's why we've kind of focused on those areas to try and craft policy and steer it um, a little bit faster than what we'd obviously be able to steer it in the US. But the, the key mechanism is bringing the industry with us. So we want to show the industry that um, we can drive this standard together. And, and then it's the industry that brings it to the FAA, not, not Sky Network. So that's, yeah. that's critically important. Genius New York is more than just a business competition. Genius New York is bringing economic growth and jobs to the area. Let's now hear from last year's finalists, Resilience. Since the Genius program, Resilience is doing great. We're up to four full-time staff and four part-time interns that we keep on year-round. We are a software company and we focus on health and integrity monitoring of complex systems. But now we're really more than just a drone company. We're focusing on you know, smart city applications, driverless cars, underwater vehicles. The sky's the limit. We, uh, we brought in almost a million dollars in contracts with a few million more in the works. Genius New York gave us our, you know, essentially our seed funding. That money allowed us to hire you know, the people we needed, attend trade shows and conferences. I love Genius New York because of the friendship. That's what's being built here. It's the collaboration and I think it's just a, a great place to be. It's always great to hear all the success and we are truly excited to see more and more of these happen in our region. So which startup do you think should win? Who has the best idea? Who are you voting for? Be sure to tell us in the chat and on social. Here's our last pitch, coming from Seattle, Washington, Drone Seed. Hi there, my name is Grit and we are Drone Seed and we do precision forestry. And what that means is we plant trees with heavy lift drone swarms. We focus on post wildfire applications right now we're paid per acre as a service by three of the five largest timber companies, the Nature Conservancy and government agencies. My background, everything I've ever done has been in sustainability. Got one acquisition in the clean tech and food waste space. The problem that we're solving with drone seed is we don't plant nearly enough trees. We plant 8 million acres a year globally, but we lose 7 million in just the United States to wildfire. And that's the 10 year rolling average. Some years it's way worse. Now we typically relied on natural regeneration to do the bulk of that restoration, but it's falling off with catastrophic wildfires supercharged by climate change. So every year, forest loss is dramatically exceeded by any gain. So we're simply going to run out of forests that can burn. So what are the problems to reforestation and why don't we do more of it? Number one is manual labor doesn't scale. This guy is a superhero. He'll plant about two acres per day of one or two year old trees in those bags and his hips grown in a nursery. Every workday he's out there will be the caloric burn of running two marathons, which is nuts. Second big obstacle, why don't we do more reforestation? The supply chain bottleneck. It's 24 months if you've got the budget and you can send the seeds off to the nursery to grow. Otherwise, tack on an extra year to apply for funding. And then lastly, Reforestation has lacked carbon credit capital access. Reforestation hasn't been competitive because you had to wait 25 years for the trees to grow before you could sell any credits. It wasn't competitive compared to any other financial asset of 25 years of uh, compounded interest rates. So that's changed within the last 18 months with the creation of standards for ex ante credits by those organizations you see at the bottom there. Ex ante credits are basically carbon credit futures that after one to two years verifying the trees survived, you're able to sell those credits. 
tapping a $285 billion carbon credit market. And this is an amazingly large market, and the U.S. hasn't even entered it in any kind of a significant way. 23% of S&P 100 companies have pledged to go carbon neutral or negative, but they're still figuring out their carbon credit footprint and baselines like Microsoft. Microsoft's carbon footprint is 16% of the voluntary credit supply. So with this scarcity, the price is expected to go from $11 all the way up to 25. We've built the tools to capture this huge market and a better future. We've reduced the supply chain down from 36 months to just 60 days by utilizing seeds in a seed vessel that boosts the survival rate. We drop these seed vessels utilizing heavy lift drone swarms. We're the first and only that's FAA approved with up to five aircraft being able to be flown by a single pilot, each carrying a 57 pound payload of the seed vessels. We're six times faster over terrain like this today. So the three key innovations. Number one, the seed vessel or puck as we call it. It soaks up moisture and helps the seed avoid desiccation or drying out and also has amendments to help them, the seeds avoid getting eaten. Number two, the precision software. The software helps us manually label the areas where the seed vessels are not going to establish well and we're not going to see trees because there's too high of rocky, rocky uh, soils or competitive vegetation. This allows us to put the seed vessels in the places they will grow with our targeting them with our flight paths. Number three is the modular fleets. We charge up to five sets of batteries for five aircraft with three that are charging, one on deck, and then one on the aircraft itself, and then we swap them like a NASCAR pit crew. This then becomes our fleet. We're able to copy and paste this fleet to scale. With this setup, we've done positive margins on our first two major projects and about 400,000 in nine months trailing revenues. I'm also incredibly excited to announce that we've received a commitment for 400,000 in additional project revenue from, for obvious reasons, in projects in California due to the wildfires going on there. We've attained this momentum because we're already cheaper by being faster. If you don't have to wait three years, no, no, no weeds are growing, so you don't have to do manual site preparation. So we're even cheaper and undercut, aside from that uh, site preparation, with credits. As we tap that market, we're able to undercut the market rate, and then we're able to in, un, undercut the entirety of that market as those credits increase in value. So we are connecting reforestation to supercharge carbon capture. Now, none of this would have been possible without a team motivated by mission, and this team has chosen this mission over all other opportunities. A mission to make reforestation scalable and mitigate the worst effects of climate change. I would really like to hear about the sales cycle. Um, certainly when there are you know, forest fires burning, I'm sure people are calling you off the hook and not thinking so hard about it, but I wonder you know, what happens when that's not what's happening in the world. Yeah, um, I'd love to talk a little bit about the go-to market there. Um, that's been our Genius New York uh, focus. Um, Sean has been leading that effort, so I'm going to share a screen and we're going to talk a little bit about the rapid contracting process. Um, and so while I do that, uh, Shauna, do you want to lead us off? Sure. First of all, hi, everyone. Um, so as Grant said, we Sorry, Shauna, I haven't introduced you. Um, you want to introduce yourself briefly? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so... My name is Shauna. I've been at DroneSeed for about two and a half years now. I have a background in geographic information systems or GIS. Um, and I got this opportunity to kind of go through the Genius New York program with um, DroneSeed working on this um, rapid contracting process. And it was fantastic. Genius New York is amazing. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Uh, so- um, You're not paid to say that. No, I just, want to thank everyone because it was a really great opportunity um but yeah it was really cool because uh i was able to work on this project and develop a process to efficiently and effectively reach out to landowners um part of this is being able to pull critical data um as i said my background's in gis so i'm a huge data nerd and just love data and um so being able to pull this data to target landowners who need us the most is really, really important. Um, and so that's kind of what you see a sample of here 
We use a variety of sources that include um, Landsat and Sentinel-2 imagery, the National Interagency Fire Center and the U.S. Geological Survey. Um, normally, this is something that would take a really long time for analysts to be able to pull, but we've developed a process to be able to do it very quickly. Welcome everyone to the Genius New York Finals and congratulations to the finals. I'm Tim Murphy, managing partner of Hancock Estabrook, a full service law firm located in downtown Syracuse next to the Tech Garden. Hancock Estabrook has a rich history of representing startup companies and we are thrilled to support Genius New York and the opportunities that it affords these startup companies and their entrepreneurs. On behalf of Hancock Estabrook, we are very excited to witness the success of each of the finalists and to recognize the forward-thinking, innovative companies they have brought to Syracuse, New York. We've heard from so many great companies today, and it's so hard to choose which one wins the grand prize of $1 million. And before we announce the winner, here's a message from Rob Simpson, president of Center State CEO, Central New York's leading economic development organization and administrator of Genius New York at the Tech Garden Incubator. The investments we will make during this program, like those of the past four years, are truly impactful for these growth-ready companies. While our Genius New York competition, like every other part of our lives, was disrupted by COVID-19 this year, these companies have continued to thrive and grow even in spite of the headwinds and unique circumstances they face. Their progress speaks not only to the significance of the technologies they are advancing, but also to the value of the investments and advantages that come with their participation in this program. Much of this program's success over the past four years is the result of the unprecedented commitment and investments made by New York State. This investment, together with the engagement of the business community and local leaders, have enabled us to provide the resources and support companies need to thrive in any environment. Congratulations to all of these companies on their progress to date, and know that we are here to help ensure your continued growth in Central New York. Are you ready to find out who the winner is? Have you told us in the chat? This is your last chance. The grand prize winner of $1 million. $1 million. $1 million. Is. Geopipe is the 2020 Genius New York $1 million winner. Wow, that's amazing. We're, cool. we're yeah. incredibly yeah. proud. That's amazing, yeah. We're, I mean, we're overjoyed to be a recipient of it. Um, you know, we really loved what we've been able to do in Central New York already and, you know, working with the Genius New York team with the other startup teams has been a great experience for us and, you know, being able to take this next step and build Geopipe even faster with Genius New York is, is a, an amazing uh, next step for us. You know, we definitely did not consider it a given that we would win by any stretch of the imagination. You know, we, we saw how how great the other teams were, the, the hard work that they put in over the course of the program, and we definitely knew it was going to be a competitive finals. So. Um, you know, I'm glad we were. I, I, I'm, I'm still proud that we were able to prevail in the face of such, uh, you know, such compelling competition. Congratulations to all the teams. We're so excited to invest in your tech and team. And can't wait to see how you scale in Central New York. To learn more about opportunities in Central New York for your startup, visit thetechgarden.com. And we'd like to thank our sponsors, Talis, Hancock Estabrook, One Group, Dermody Burke and Brown, AIS, and Newman and Lexstein. And thank you for participating and watching. This has been Genius New York 2020. 